of beads continues and I've had quite a few comments asking can beads do what data bender does and the answer is uh, kinda I've been sitting working on this patch for a while. <laughs> and I think I've gone to the stage where I no longer understand what's actually happening. But I definitely like what's happening. So I think maybe a good idea for this video would be to kind of like reverse engineer the patch to get a better understanding of, of, of what is actually going on. <laughs> it's been mad fun, I'll tell you that. And I think it's close. I would say it's quite close, you know. Sorry. <laughs> What's going on? Let's get started. did what I intended to do, which was reverse engineer the patch, unpatch, repatch, but somewhere along the way I started trying uh, different things and I've ended up with something kind of totally different again, but I think I'm starting to get to grips with the, the sort of elements that you need to get this glitching. And so now I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to demonstrate this. And I think what I'm going to do is just really try and simplify everything. So let's go to just drums. And let's start. <laughs> right. So what you might notice here is that every time the freeze light is activated, there's a different glitch happening. So the first thing you want to do is send a gate to the freeze input. Yep. 
yeah, this is sounding kind of glitchy and data benderish. So the um, the freeze here is coming from channel two of Pams, and it's set to a division of four of the main clock, which is 155 BPM. So it's coming on pretty regularly. And let's have a look at the shape. It's a straight square wave, so just a basic gate to freeze. And obviously if you want the, the glitches to come in more often, then a faster gate or even a wider or thinner gate if you want them to be like longer or shorter glitches. So that is one element. Another thing you want to be doing is sending a clock to the seed input. Now I've found that the sort of multiplications of the density knob which determines how fast your glitches are, they're quite sensitive so you want to be sending a slow gate to the seed input or a slow tempo so this one is channel 5 of Pams. Maybe I'll put some um, some chords in to keep the music interesting. So on channel 5 of Pams, do, 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 what am I in here? I have got the the division set to to an eighth of the clock so you want a slow clock coming in and to make the clock even more diverse I'm actually sending a kind of random signal to it which means that sometimes the clock will be so weak that it won't register and that will give you an even slower division and also mix up your divisions that means that it will be it'll be like different and that brings more variety to your glitches um, so what's next the size knob can move between sort of reverse and forward and the shape knob is like the envelope of your glitches advice I can give about these is just experiment and modulate. <laughs> yeah. I don't actually have any modulation coming into these, I've just been manually doing it. Um, and that brings me on to the density knob, so when the density knob is at 12 o'clock, it um, doesn't create any seeds. So I am sitting this at 12 at all times and using... What am I using? I'm using something to modulate it. Let's have a look. Channel 7 of Pams is set to a division of 4. And and it's a random wave shape as well. And I've actually got it going into maths, and I'm neg and I'm modulating it negatively, so it's going this way. So that means that basically the knob can go to here or to here, to here or to here, <laughs> any of those. But because it's a random wave shape, it's going to be a random amount. And if you modulate it more intensely, you're going to get up into those kind of sort of texture drone style shapes. And if you have it down light, you're going to get more rhythmic. 
<laughs> but it does oscillate, self oscillate quite quickly. Let's change this up again. brings me on to the pitch. The pitch is very good <laughs> and one of the things that's kind of unique about this kind of sampling technique is you know the speed changes as the pitch changes so that has quite a lot of um, bearing on what's going to happen to your sound. I've been really exploring modulating the pitch as one of the main ways to get this glitching. Uh, the way I've got that happening is I'm using channel 4 of PAMS to trigger channel 4 of MAFS. So let's have a look at, at PAMS here. So I've got it, I actually got it at a division of 12, so a very slow signal coming out of PAMS. And it's just a square wave which means all the modulation is coming from maths and basically I've got it with a, a long attack and a long release but actually before we modulate the pitch let's just listen to what moving the pitch can do to the sound <laughs> oh, is that transformers anyone? So it's doing cool things, but it just sounds a bit mad. But as soon as you add uh, modulation to it, it, um, it really helps bring these beats to come to life. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to turn the pitch all the way down. <laughs> That's even more Transformers, what the hell? And I think because this is modulating at such a slow rate, you're not kind of getting the same pitch glitch repeating because at any given time it could be at a different part of the of the cycle if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so it does make a difference whether you've got the pitch like all the way up or all the way down and you're modulating it positively or negatively.
<laughs> what, what do you think? I think that sounds pretty dope. Experimentation is really the key here because it's becoming slightly unpredictable, especially the more modulation you add to the equation. But once you get a basic patch going that's, that's working, it becomes so much fun. <laughs> yeah! Exactly sure why this has suddenly started working really well. <laughs> but it's really cool. to say like I'm sure you're getting sick of this beat so let's move on to something else but I don't know I'm enjoying this Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> Some Mario stuff going on there. Right. We'll try another patch or... Increased the the seed gate, and it is now sitting at two times the BPM, and it's proven again to be really unpredictable, which just goes to show the <laughs> the benefits of uh, exploration and experimentation when it comes to using beads in this manner. What I found in this this patch that if you increase the size, things get a bit mental. <laughs> yeah. And likewise, if you increase the feedback. So good. Adequately demonstrated that beads definitely can do crazy glitch. Only concern is did I did I explain it well enough? Because <laughs> let's be honest, I'm not a hundred percent certain really what's going on in any of these patches. But it's definitely opened beads up a lot to me. Um, it's way deeper than I realised. And while it doesn't do <clears throat> exactly what Databender does, actually, in a way, it's more weird and more experiment, experimental, experimental. <laughs> um, and I think they actually do work really well together. Things like that. <laughs> so yeah, let me know down there in the comments. 
comments if you if this video has helped inspire you or if you've tried making your own mad glitch how did you do it what are your patch tips <laughs> what Catch you next time.